Hello again and welcome to this lesson. Uh, in it we are going to look at power equations. Okay, so what is a power equation? Well, to be 100% honest with you, I don't know if that's a real word. That is a word I made up to describe equations where my unknown my unknown is in the base is in the base of a power and all such terms have the same exponent have the same exponent okay so what do I mean I mean if I have an x squared then the only other term with an x in will also be x squared and um, all of the other terms would be constant terms in other words just constant numbers okay let me give you a few examples just writing down some I, I'm just making up x squared minus 1 is equal to 2x squared plus 4 okay I just completely made that up but this is a power equation because um, my unknown is in a power is a power the, uh, that's not a power that's a power. My unknown is in the power and all of these powers have the same exponents. That's the point. The other terms that don't have x's must be constants. Okay, let me do another one. It doesn't have to be squared. It can be x to the power of 7 and it can be 2 minus x to the power of 7 is equal to 4x to the power of 7. Something like that. That's another example. Here you can see my unknown, the x could have been a y or s or a p whatever can um it has an exponent so it is a power and uh, the two powers that we have in this expression both have the same exponent so what that simply means is that i can uh i can add them together if they were ever to be on the same side okay and that would be my very first step okay my first step would be choose a side choose a side for the power terms okay now why not just choose the one with the greatest the greatest exponent sorry not great exponent coefficient coefficient okay in this case it would be the right hand side Okay, so we are choosing a side. The second step would be to uh, subtract the power terms from the other side. Okay. And the constant term and the constant terms from the powers side okay so if in this case I want to get uh, I'm choosing the one with highest exp uh, coefficient which is the 4 so this is my this the right hand side is where I want all my powers so on the left hand side I got negative x to the power of 7 if I have to subtract this term I actually have to add it if I want to get rid of it on this side I have to add it because I'm already subtracting it so I'm adding it on both sides x to the power of 7 and on the right hand side now I would only be left with the 2 equal to on the left right hand side I now have 5x to the power of 7 okay that would be my second step if I had any constant terms on this side so there was maybe a negative 1 then I would take my negative 1 and add it on both sides again so that I can get rid of all the constant terms that are crowding these x terms okay there's not one in that specific example okay my third step look at me I'm changing color my third step would be to solve the power 
the power. What I mean by that is get the power on its own. Get the power alone. Alone. So obviously at this point all I should really have is the, the coefficient in front. Okay, Is the coefficient in front which I now can divide on both sides because I'm multiplying it I can divide it on both sides and this specific example is now a mess so but I will have now x to the power of 7 is equal to 2 over 5 okay now comes the final step and that is to take the root the root on both sides on both sides so that the power is to the one. What do I mean by that? I want this to the power of 7, I want it x to the power of 1 because I actually want to know what is x to the power of 1 equal to. I've got x to the power of 7 so how do I get the exponent to be 1? Well I'll have to divide this exponent with 7. Okay, But what I do on the one side I must do on the other side but, but this one doesn't have exponents so what is it actually that I did when I divide an exponent by 7? Well, I actually took the root, the seventh root, because that means I take the seventh root of this one, and now I take the seventh root on the other side as well. And that is maybe a calculation that you will have to do with your calculator. The seventh root of 2 over 5. Okay, that would be the solution for this. Uh, thought up question that I had here so but that's how we do it okay so just one very important very important point okay imagine I have x squared is equal to 1 okay I am saying that there's a number that I'm multiplying by itself and I'm getting an answer of 1. And you would say immediately, well that's easy, that's just x equal to 1. But I would insist that there is another answer, x equal to negative 1. Okay. Why is that? Well because when I multiply something by itself it will always be positive. So if 1 times 1 is 1, then negative 1 times negative 1 is also 1. However, x to the power of 3 equal to 1, this can only be x equal to 1. We can't have x to the power, uh, x is also equal to negative 1. This is not, not true nonsense. Okay, this is nonsense. Okay, uh, not really. Okay, it's not true. It's the wrong answer. Because the, when I take negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1, I don't get positive one I get negative one so the only answer that satisfies this is x equal to one so this one does not satisfy x cubed equal to one so there's only one answer however both of these solve this x squared in other words negative one squared is equal to one the same as just one squared equal to one I think you get that the point I'm trying to make is the following if I had to solve this, x squared equal to 1, with the ideas we had up here, I would take the square root on both sides, the square root on both sides, and I'd get an answer. x is equal to 1. The problem is it's not the only answer. Whenever I have an even exponent, and let me write that out, okay, power equations, with even exponents have positive and negative solutions.
Okay. Let's get back there. Okay, does that make sense? Okay. So let me do another example. If I had x to the power of 4 is equal to 16, so I take the fourth root on both sides, but because it's an even number, it means that it can have both positive and negative values. So we can take x to the power of 4 and take the fourth root of this is equal to, and because we're taking an even root, an even root will have to put in a plus and minus in front as well. Okay, which means I get two answers actually for this this equation. I get x is equal to 2 and then I write here or x is equal to negative 2. Let's see. If x is equal to 2, 2 to the power of 4 is 16. Negative two, um, 2 to the power of 4, so negative 2 to the power of 4 would also equal 16. So both of them are indeed solutions. Well, I'm going to stop here for this video. I hope um, you have a basic of idea of what power equations are, how I solve them by taking the powers all to one side, then taking the root of that power on both sides, and, uh, and so we go. And eventually, uh, one thing that's very important to remember is that if my power equation had even exponents, I'll just have to add a plus minus in front of my answers to indicate that both positive and negative values will be solutions to that equation. Well, I'm glad you could make it to the end of this. I'll see you in the next video where I'll look at uh, um, throwing all of these things together that we've done so far with SAMDOP. Okay, see you there.